So if you've been following along with this rolling backup series, then by now you've got all the information you need to play rolling backup on just about any song in just about any key. It's just up to whether or not you're interested in learning the material and using it. But you might have noticed that there's still a pretty big difference between this material, which works, and the stuff that the real pros play, the stuff that Earl played, the stuff that J.D. Crow played, and the stuff that all of our favorite bluegrass banjo players play all the time. They do play the material that I've showed you so far, but there's something else going on. So now we need to talk about next steps, playing the real bluegrass backup. And it's not even that big of a step. We're still just learning patterns and then learning where to use them, then practicing them, and then using them. It's the same thing we've done for all the other patterns in this series. But here's what's challenging. The patterns that we're gonna look at today, and from now on, for the most part, are gonna to apply to one chord at a time. The patterns I show you today are not gonna to apply to a bunch of different chords, just one chord. And then we'll look at patterns that do apply to those other chords, but they're gonna be somewhat separate, different patterns for different chords. That makes it more complex, but it also makes it more interesting. So even though things are about to get more difficult, your playing is about to get a lot better. So it's worth it. So then let's do that. Let's look at some essential rolling backup licks for the chord G. But first, let me just tell you that if you want the tablature for this lesson and all of my lessons, then you can go to patreon.com slash Eli Gilbert Banjo. That's where I post everything that you can't find here on YouTube. And that means tablature and bonus practice tips, all kinds of extra cool stuff. And it's also what helps me keep making more of these videos. So I really appreciate it. Also, if you don't mind, do me a favor and subscribe to this channel and like this video. That's another great way to help me make more of these videos. Anyway, let's take a look at some of these licks. So let's go a little bit more in depth with these licks. One of the things you might've noticed is that most of them include either a slide or a hammer on from the second fret to the third fret. That's really common. And as it turns out, the slide and the hammer on are actually interchangeable. If you go watch your favorite banjo players, then you're gonna notice when they play licks like these, some of them slide more often, some of them hammer on more often. It kind of depends on their preference. So for you, it's gonna depend on your preference, but it's worth being able to do both because sometimes the sound calls for a slide and sometimes it calls for a hammer on. And if slides and hammer ons and all that stuff are new to you, then that's okay. You can check out my essential bluegrass banjo skills video, which I'll leave a link in the description of this video and that'll get you up to speed because the licks really aren't that hard to play. They just require a little bit more than keeping your left hand in one place and playing a certain roll pattern with your right hand. It requires that you're actually doing two things at once. It seems difficult, but once you get used to it, it's no problem. And these licks especially are gonna get easier and easier the more that you do them. So here's how these licks work. They basically just take up about one measure of G and they're all more or less interchangeable. So if you think about the material that we learned in the first three installments of this series, you can replace one measure of any of that G material with one of these licks. You could also play them back to back to get two measures. You could combine them in any way you want. These are really modular, like the other material that we've learned. And one way to think about this is to look at all the material that we've looked at before as maybe the backbone of our playing. That's our foundation. And every time we wanna use a lick like this, we're just replacing one of those measures with one of these licks. So instead of playing something like this, you'll play something like this. So if you wanna use them in a song, just make sure you know where the G chord is in that song and then use these licks instead of the other material that we've already learned. And when it comes to practicing this material, there's a couple different things you can do. 
You can play each of the licks on their own over and over again just to get that comfortable. You can also try playing these licks back to back all in a row. And you don't need to play them only in that order. In fact, you probably should play them in a bunch of different orders just to get more flexibility with these licks. But once that's comfortable, once you can actually play this material, probably the most important thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is actually use them in songs. And the process that we're gonna use here is not gonna be any different than what we've done in the last three lessons. We're just gonna apply the right amount of material to the right number of measures for the right chord. So here's the chord progression for Your Love Is Like A Flower in G which is just G, C, and D. And we're just gonna substitute these licks for some of those measures of G. Now that's starting to sound a lot more like the bluegrass backup that we're used to. Obviously the C and the D is still using material from the previous lessons, but we're gonna get there in the next couple lessons, don't worry. The path forward from here is just doing this process with other songs that you know and putting in these licks where they fit. And they will fit in most places. It's just really common stuff that people play. You might have to adjust a note here or there just to make it possible to start and end on the right note, but that's okay. That's part of the process as well. And don't worry, you don't have to learn all of these licks right now. You might just wanna start with one of them. You might just wanna start with two of them. It's really up to what you're ready for. If you've been playing for a while, then these licks might not be that difficult. If this is really early on for you, then yeah, you might wanna start with just one. That's not a big deal. Just make sure that whatever you do work on, you really learn and you look at it thoroughly and meticulously, just so you play exactly what you mean to. And if you do that, then at a certain point, you'll be ready to come back and learn more of these licks. They'll always be here waiting, so there's no rush. Okay, so now we can do basically the same process with 3-4. The licks are gonna be a little different, obviously, but we can apply them in the same way. So here are the licks that we're gonna look at for playing over the chord G in 3-4. So you probably noticed that there are some similarities between these licks and the licks for 4-4. Four, four. Obviously they just fit into 3-4 instead, but we're gonna apply them in the same way. So here's the chord progression for the song Before I Met You, which is one that Flat and Scruggs used to do. And we're just gonna apply some of these licks when there's a G chord.
And that's kind of all there is to it. By now you're probably picking up the fact that this is a really simple process. It's just kind of difficult to do because we know exactly what we're supposed to do, but then we have to actually practice it enough so that we can do it. So just like in 4-4, take these 3-4 examples and learn them and apply them and then put them in different combinations. You're going to find that you like some of them. You're going to find that some of them aren't as much fun. Some of them you like but are more difficult, so it's worth working on them. Some of them are easier, but you might not like them as much, so maybe you don't need to bother playing them. It's all up to you. It's just up to whether or not you're actually going to put in the time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed all of these licks, and I hope you get a lot of good use out of them. And make sure you check out patreon.com slash Eli Gilbert Banjo if you're interested in supporting the work that I'm doing here and getting more banjo content. And make sure you're subscribed to this channel. That's how you're going to stay up to date with the videos that I'm going to be posting in the next couple weeks about these kind of licks for other chords. That's really important too. So make sure you stick around and check that out. Anyway, that's all for me today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.